I was just feeling like I've got to get my mind right before I go to this meeting. At that time, I made eye contact with the most gorgeous man I've ever met in my life. He had the darkest brown eyes, and he had the most gorgeous smile of anybody, anybody on the beach. And so I'm looking at him, and I stared at him, and then I took off running, and I just broke down and started crying. This man had no arms, no legs, and I don't know how he was operating this motorized wheelchair, but he was managing to do it. And as I looked at him, my whole attitude changed. And you better believe, anytime I'm having a bad day, I think about that guy. First of all, how does he eat? Talk on the phone. Get in that wheelchair to begin with. How does he live every day with a smile on his face like that? And what do we do? We think about all our aches and pains and problems. Katie, I came back and told my secretary, and I said, you know what? I, I got an attitude check every morning because of this good-looking guy. I just regret not going back and telling him what an impact he had on my life. And I'm dead serious. Nothing else has ever happened to me. Nothing else has ever happened to me. No loss has affected me, or no win has affected me like that young man. So I want everybody to think about that. Get a visual of it, and think about what your attitude is going to be every day. You got me? You feel it? Yes. Okay. Because it, it can make a difference. It's like... I saw this cartoon, and guys don't take offense, but I saw this cartoon about people waking up in the morning. And the wife, or I'm sorry, the husband got up first and he said, good Lord, it's morning. He goes over and he opens up the blind, says, yes, good Lord, it's morning. The lady gets up, goes the other side, opens up the blind, and she said, good Lord, no, good morning, Lord. Isn't that how we look at things? We got a choice, right? High expectations. Hopefully everybody in this room has got high expectations. Put that bar as high as you can get it and just absolutely, absolutely drive yourself to reach it. Remember, that's your attitude. That's your discipline. You got to have it and you got to believe it and you got to do it every day. This past year, we did not reach our goals. It was, it was hard. Why did we uh, not reach our goals? We lack the competitive drive all the time. Don't let up. Don't let up. Remember, you never arrive. <laughs> so you've got to keep thriving to be the absolute best you can be. I've coached for 35 years at this university. And I can't wait to coach next year. Can't wait. Why? Because we got a challenge. Because expectations are high. And we underachieved. No one should ever excel underachieving. That's why we came home and practice. Everybody, oh, we, get, we made CNN. <laughs> Hallelujah. We don't get on CNN very much in University of Tennessee, do we? So that was big. <coughs> But I'm sitting there on the workout machine, and I looked up, and I'm thinking, headline news. And there's Pratt Pavilion. Well, what's happened since then? As soon as they saw them, we had calls from five or six universities. What'd they do? They went back and started practicing. So you can take a bad situation and turn it into something good. And having that competitive drive is important. Now our team has a better understanding about how we do things at the University of Tennessee. We do things a certain way at the University of Tennessee. I'm proud of this university. I'm proud of the leadership and the administration and the classroom. You know, it is a great place. So challenge you students. Make sure you get to know the this, this staff and faculty because 
might be nice sometimes just to go in and sit down and talk or pick up the phone, ask for an appointment, and get to know the people that are invested in you and can make a difference for you. They've made a difference for Coach Summit. I just can't, I just can't thank them enough. And, you know, Ed Bowling, a long time ago, stepped up and said, we're going to support what? Women's, Women's athletics. athletics. We were over in the old gym. Y'all remember the old gym, guys? <laughs> it was so dark in there. But we didn't know the difference. And we played there, and we loved it. And my first game that I coached, we got beat. We lost by one point. And I remember after that game, I called my dad. Well, I called my mother first because she's a lot more gentle than my dad was. <laughs> and she answers the phone and she said, how are you doing? I said, I'm doing fine, doing fine. Never asked me about the game. Probably forgot I didn't even have a game. <laughs> first game of my career. And we, of course, when we got beat, I was just crushed and I just thought, I gotta call, I gotta call home. Well, after that, I said, uh, is dad there? And she goes, yes. And so I said, well, let me talk to him. And so when he picked up the phone, he said, all right. Never heard him say anything but all right. Never hello and never goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Any of you have parents like that? We're just like, boom. <laughs> Lisa got it over with. But I said, hey, Dad. He goes, Joanne? And I said, no, so we got people. How much? Go one point. Long pause. I thought he'd already hung up. <laughs> <laughs> Long pause, and he said, "You know, you don't take donkeys to the Kentucky Derby." <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "Yes, sir. I know." Click. <laughs> <laughs> so there not be any donkeys in this room. <laughs> you want to be good, you got to step up and be race horses, right? you got to step up and understand the investment it takes to be the absolute best. And that's what I challenge all of you today, just like I challenge our student athletes. Because I hate win I, I hate losing. I hate with passion. I don't do well. <laughs> My neighbors know it. <laughs> the last time we lost against Xavier, uh, that's a few years ago, you know, no one even knew who Xavier was. Melanie Baltham, she's now the head coach of Vanderbilt. Well, I got her that job. Because she beat us. She got the job at Vanderbilt. But, you know, it's, it's just all about what you're invested in and what you're willing to give. And it's okay. When you fail, you may have to process it. I literally went home after that loss, put on my pajamas, Walked in the neighborhood for four days in the same pajamas. <laughs> and they just knew that I was depressed. <laughs> and they left me alone. It's okay to be down. But don't stay down. you got to get back up. So for all of you, when you face adversity, just know it's temporary. If you will only allow it to be temporary. It's not permanent. But it's up to you to get it done. And you have had all the knowledge and the direction. I just hope you listen. I hope you listen. And I hope you'll be ready. And you know it's competitive and it's tough times right now. It'll turn around. I don't know how long it's going to take it. This economy will turn around. But you better get out there and battle against 